the controlled party. I'm Harris Faulkner, and this is the Fox Report. It's the bottom of the hour. If you are just joining us, we're looking ahead. President Obama preparing for his State of the Union address about where the country is right now. The customary speech before Congress comes at a time, though, when Americans are saying they are more dissatisfied with government now than they have been in any time in the past 13 years. New polling showing 65 percent of Americans surveyed say they are dissatisfied. That's up from 47 percent in 2008 and 30 percent in 2001. It is picking up. Why? Let's bring in our political insiders of Fox News. And you can join the conversation, too, on Twitter at FN Insiders and at Harris Faulkner, hashtag Fox Report Weekend. John LeBoutlier, former Republican congressman in New York. Pat Cadell, a former pollster for President Jimmy Carter and Fox News contributor. And Doug Schoen, former pollster and, Bill, and President Bill Clinton, for him, rather, and Fox News contributor as well. Gentlemen, great to have you tonight. Great to uh, Doug, what is driving this dissatisfaction, specifically? Well, I think there are three or four things, Harris, and I think we're at a cataclysmic moment. First, there's the economic condition in America. We are at record low levels of uh, employment for the population, even as the unemployment rate itself drops. Fewer people are working. We have a health care bill, which has really failed the American people in their terms. And internationally, we are seen as weak and impotent as controversies rage in Syria, North Korea, Iran. Bottom line, the American people are dissatisfied with both parties, Harris. You know, John, instead of uniting the people trusted to fix these things, I've heard you say that we're more divided than ever. And this is part of the problem, why people are so unhappy. Yeah, Harris, if you could put that uh, graph back up for a sec. If you look to the left of it, uh, it dips down, the little dip on the left, that's right after 9-11, when the country was united behind the government, which happened to be President George W. Bush, mm -hmm. Republican House and Senate. They had a chance to unite the country and do something together to make the country better, Republican and Democrat. They didn't do it. And we have a steady climb through the whole Bush years to 2008 when President Obama, a change, the first black American to be elected president, out of the box, different, who had spoken about unity and not dividing the country, he gets in. And there's hope in the country that he could uh, unite us. Look at that thing. It keeps going up. Today, we're more divided and more ticked off against the government of and both parties yeah. than we've ever been. Pat, I would ask this, though. Really, did anybody think that one man could do it? Congress wears this, too. Well, the whole system wears it. The fact is that the person who was going to make changes didn't, in fact, just became part of the same landscape and, in fact, more partisan and more divisive than any president since Richard Nixon. But what happens is that we, the country's reacting to a failed system, a system, they believe, where the economy is taking care of the, the people who are powerful and not them, a system where they believe today we saw 21% of the people said that the government operates with the consent of the governed. Uh, without the, rest, the consent of without the government. The consent, it's, it's three, yes, only 21% mm -hmm. thought, which is the whole basis of the Declaration of Independence. I, I always refer to that. You have a country that believes that, as, as Doug said, the economy and, and health care, and most of all, a sense that they are left out of this and by the way, they're not divided. They're united in their opposition to mm -hmm. what the political system is doing to them, a system that they are told is the only game in town. You know, it's interesting because I responded to John by saying, oh, but one man really couldn't do it. Well, you know what? Maybe this one man thinks he can because you know what, Pat, Doug and John? Now we got this, this threat, as some in the Republican Party are calling it, that the pin might be mightier than Congress. Well, here's the thing. Presidents have the ability, George W. Bush, right after 9-11, sadly not thereafter. But President Obama gave a speech in 2004 where he said, this is not a red America or a blue America, it's a United States of America. After he was reelected, Harris, he said, I won, read the election results, I'm going forward my way. One man can make a difference, but he has to do something more than play politics. And what I think we're saying is that both sides put political gain ahead of the greater good. Uh, well, what I was saying specifically about the pin is that the president is saying, look, if Congress doesn't agree with me on the economy and other things. That's what I was alluding to. <laughs> this He's going to do it without Congress. That's what I was alluding to. We have a country, and it started under Bush, whatever, in which 
you know, to hell with the law, to hell with the Constitution. If you have the power, we saw this in the con in the Senate on the after 200 years, basically a precedent on filibusters. If you got the votes, you do what you want. And it looks more and more like, as we've said on the show, a banana republic. Presidents out there saying, I don't care what the law is, I'll just order it. Right, but this this thing about executive orders is a little overrated. No, okay? it's not. They, they've they, carried them so far, John. Well, they have, but you can't... You don't think the president would, would on his own, unilaterally do some things about the economy as he's well, threatening to do? Well, there's not much do, he's allowed to, to do. do. An executive order is an order by the president over a department under his purview. But so he can tell the Treasury Harris, Department... I think you're right. I think the president has made it clear he's going to test the limits. There was the... Well, he listed where he wanted to. Right. The, the things that divide... Provide the economy. Why does he Minimum need wage, to? He's the inequality that he's pointing to. He can't even get the but Democrats in the Senate. But it's interesting. You say as a, he has the Senate, but look at those 39 members of Congress who moved against him with regard to what was happening with the rollout of Obamacare well, just this past fall. That's because he failed them. He promised the country and, and he promised and them something. And sanctions with Iran. He doesn't have the Senate. We really are going to have a fight now over whether there are going to be much stronger sanctions on Iran potentially scuttling his deal on well, their nuclear progress. President, lead, presidential leadership, as Richard Neustadt's famous book said about presidential leadership, mm -hmm. and quoted, is the ability to persuade people. It mm. is the ability to persuade. That's what great leaders do. They do not get to rule unilaterally or by fiat. This president is not interested in leading. He's interested in ruling by fiat. The last and great and persuader was, was Reagan. You never heard Reagan say, well, if I don't get what I want, I'm taking the pen out. He he persuaded even Democratic voters well, to go. Well, my four-year-old threatens all the time to take her ball and go home. But she's four. Uh, <laughs> one of, one she of the should be in the Republican leadership. That's well, how they play. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. There you go. Snap from you. You know you're a Republican, right? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm bothered <laughs> by it at times. Uh, Daniel Pfeiffer, senior White House advisor today, talking about the stroke and the mightiness of the pen. Let's watch that. The president will say to the country, he's not going to wait. He has a pen and he has a phone. He's going to use those to move the ball forward to create opportunity. Uh, and, and this from Twitter now. Q Bones uh, writes, people are dissatisfied with government. The more people expect from government, the greater the overall dissatisfaction will be. Have there been too many promises, Doug? There have been huge numbers of promises. I'm going to change your health care system. I'm going to bring the country together. I'm going to basically solve international crises. And the net result has been, Harris, that our economy is adrift, our health care system is broken, it's gotten worse, our international position is eroding, and confidence in government is going down. And you're absolutely right. The president has decided he's going to do what he can with the pen, with unilateral exercise of power. He has the assertion that I can do things that are clearly legislatively required is almost unprecedented in, no, in a non-wartime situation where the president, the commander-in-chief, does have unique powers. This is a really about, as I said, we have, we're have we going to do what we want and try to stop us. And that is really dangerous, and both parties have engaged in this, because it's politics before even respect for the law and respect for where we... And, and, a, and a failure, by the way, of leadership. And that's why when you see another poll we, the, the Gallup had this week, where the lowest percentage of people are willing to elect their own congressman uh, and all Congress mm -hmm. people with 17 percent for the Congress, 46 their own. Yeah, they don't you even know, want the people no, they put no, in no, office. No, it's not. They it, call it's, their own. And Gallup said it could be a wave election, but it's not about either party. Both parties feel the same right. way about their people. I want to get the State of the Union from you guys. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We ask this on Twitter. What is the state of our union? And I, I'm anxious to see how you all break it down differently. Stay close.